And then I see something on my door and I'm gonna play the clip for you. That's crazy. That's crazy. When people you used to fuck with put bloody tampons on your door. <laughs> What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna be doing a story time for you guys. It's been quite some time since my last story time video. I know you guys have been asking me uh, here and there to do another story time, and I honestly was gonna hold off on this to maybe talk about this later on this year, this particular story. But some recent developments just happened, and I was like, you know what? stuff like this only happens to me so i only think it is it's only right and fitting to kind of break down this this entire saga for you guys and uh you know just actually just have a good time with it man I, me personally i like to turn negative not so great things into something positive for you guys so we can all have a laugh and have a good time with it man so this is the story of the tampon bandit all right so let's get to how we got to where we are now um it wasn't always like this I, I didn't always call this person the tampon bandit this is a new phrase but you know certain things happen and you, you know people get nicknames so for those who don't know i want to say a few months ago i was uh um talking to someone or i guess you could say dating someone i was interested in this individual I'm not gonna say no names if you follow me on instagram you know exactly who i'm talking about or whatnot so i was messing with this individual or whatnot and i've been really trying to talk to this person for quite some time like i want to say sometime in 2020 this person ended up following me on instagram and i've been trying to shoot my shot but nothing happened i finally ended up getting the number when i randomly met her out and about and once again nothing happened but i didn't force it it was just one of those things well shit you know you know how you get somebody's number and you text here and there conversation don't really go nowhere but like, all right cool i ain't i ain't overdo it like if i see you i see you if i don't it's whatever so i finally end up linking up with this person uh we actually go out to eat everything's cool i'm like okay i like the vibes we have similar interests i'm like okay i'm really rocking with this maybe this could potentially be the one we will see so i want to say and and this is kind of a lesson to all y'all out there males and females you gotta pay attention to the signs they show up but sometimes we don't pay attention to them so we end up going to this after hour spot this is like i want to say the first time uh me and this person actually like rode together or whatever <laughs> or i believe we met up there i forgot the logistics of it and as we're going to inside, there was another homie or whatever. He's coming outside the after hour spot. So I'm chopping it up with him. Like, yo, what's good? Nice to see you. I hadn't seen you in a while. And he saw who I was with. And he he pulled me to the side. And no reason to. He could have just let me cup, kept going in. But he pulled me to the side. And he said, yo, be careful with this person right here. Watch out for her. And I was like, what you mean? He was like, just, just be careful. Now, mind you, I probably should have paid attention to that because this is my first time really interacting with this person on this level, like on some, you know, we just getting to know each other. But the fact that he said that and then he just walked away, he just disappeared into the night. It, it was like he was some type of uh, foreseen spirit that just popped up to tell me, hey, watch out for this person and poof, disappeared. So I never even thought to hit the person up afterwards, like what they were talking about, but I thought it was kind of weird. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And then I went in there, not paying attention to the sign, turn up, have a good time. It was cool, whatever. So we vibing out. We had been vibing out and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good, feeling great or whatever. Some of y'all seen it on the story or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, just having a good time. Everything is cool. There's no, I don't see any signs outside of that that initial warning from the homie i don't see nothing that would indicate things about to go left but that's how life is a lot of times when things are good 
the shoe always falls. So you got to kind of be prepared for that. And I was not. So I want to say, um, I'm not sure exactly when, but, uh, I was actually, I had planned a, a, a little date with this person. And at this point we're dating. She said it herself. So I planned a date with this person, went to a bowling alley, had a great time. It was fun. You know, it was just a good time, good vibes or whatever. We pull up uh, to meet up with my other homie that was DJing at one spot. And then we pulled up uh, to an after hour spot, the same one that we normally would go to. And everything cool. Night is fantastic. It's it just, it's a great night. You know, I'm not getting too lit. She's lit because we, she rode with me. And, you know, I'm the des designated driver and I, you know, I'm, I'm big on not getting too messed up because I'm not one, I'm not trying to leave my car out and about anywhere I'm at. And two, you know, you just, if you're going to be the designated driver, you gotta, you know, gotta stay true to that. Cause I gotta make sure everybody get home. That's just how I always am. So I'm chilling. She's super lit, turned up, just throwing ass. I'm like, I'm just having a good time. She gets up and go to the restroom. Now, mind you, I'm not looking for nothing bad. I'm literally just vibing out. She goes to the restroom. She comes out. And I'm just chilling. Next thing I know, I see her throwing cheeks on another guy. Now, I thought I was tripping. I'm like, maybe I did have much too much to drink. I rubbed the eyes. And she throwing cheeks on a random guy. And she looking back at it. Like, if a female looking back while throwing the cheeks, she having a great time. Now, I get it. She's drunk. She's lit. Maybe doesn't recognize it, but that's still no excuse because, hey, if I was getting rolled up by another chick, whether I'm drunk or not, and I'm with you and we're quote unquote dating or whatever the situation is, there's a good chance it's not going to go well for me. So she comes back to where we were and I don't even make a big scene. I'm I'm just like, yo, like, what was up with that? You know what I'm saying? Like, like I see you dancing on some other guy. She kind of ignores it. Like, she kind of, like, passes. Like, she don't... It's like she kind of ignores the situation or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, I'm just addressing it. And she kind of just, you know, glances over. Like, it's not a big deal. So, at that point, my mood changed. I'm I'm big on uh, respect. And I, at that point, I'm like, bro, I'm not feeling this, like, at all. So, my mood is I'm irritated. She can tell. So, because I'm irritated at what she did, she turns the fuck up. I'm, mind you, it's zero. We're at we're at a zero, and then it goes to a hundred quick in front of people that I know, friends, all these people are seeing her. Like, we can we can go right now. We can fucking leave right now. Like, I'm, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm confused. I'm like, what the hell is going on? She going insane, like cursing, just like talking, talking kind of spicy. So my homie that's with me, he trying to figure out what's going on. And I'm trying to get like, can we calm down? Like, let's go talk outside. Like, what is going on? You really doing this? I'm like, what? I'm so lost. So we go outside, bro. And I'm trying to talk to this motherfucker, bro. I'm really trying. Like, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, you, I didn't like what I saw out there. And she's like, uh-uh. We're not about to do this, Mr. Ross. She used to call me Mr. Ross all the time. We're not about to do this, Mr. Ross. You, you're not about to, you're not about to come at me like that. You should know me better. I'm, be I'm a better than that. I'm like, what are you talking about? You, you was the one dancing on that dude. I'm just addressing it, letting you know I'm not cool with that. If we supposed to be some type of item or trying to get to know each other or dating, whatever this situation is, I don't rock like that. And she just just kept going off like oh you oh this is unbecoming of you mr ross you being insecure i'm like oh lord bro and one thing i'm not a big fan of is someone calling you insecure because you don't like a certain action that they're doing considering is one of those things where if i was to do the same thing you would not have a you wouldn't like it that's just that's just what it is if you like someone you're not gonna be cool with someone dancing on somebody else in front of you and then you address it and they just nonchalant about it. Like, I don't I don't call that insecure. Maybe some people do. Whatever. I have standards. That's just my morals on it. So at that point, I'm like, and I'm not getting upset. I'm just trying to get her to calm down. We're outside. She yelling and shit. Next thing I know. Now, this person, she smokes weed on the regular. I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm not really 
I don't, I don't really smoke like that. You know what I'm saying? So I, it wasn't a big deal. But the next thing I know, she pulls out the cigarette, the cancer stick. And I'm just was like, wait, where did this come from? Like she pulling out the cig, bro. Like she she's stressed out now. And I'm like, wait, what? So I'm even though it, it kind of threw me off, I'm still trying to get her to like relax, relax, calm down, relax. And at this point, it wasn't working. She wasn't trying to hear. She was like, you can go home, Mr. Ross, if you want to. I'm going to stay here with my friend. So guess what I did? I went home. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm not about to stay here. Like, the disrespect, you know what I'm saying? And my friends that was in there, you know, they weren't liking the energy because she just went back in there, started throwing ass like nothing ever happened. So I was like, all right, bet. Old time, I'm, I'm heading back to the crib. She texted me. Oh, uh, screw you, Mr. Ross. You actually left me. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, what? I'm not about to. <laughs> Am I supposed to stay? You told me to leave. I'm going to leave. I don't, I don't want to know parts of this. Apparently, that's how you get down. Like, I don't get down like that. So she upset because I left her. And it was like, uh, F me. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. So I want to say maybe that next day after everything, I guess, cooled off. We had a conversation or whatever, and she apologized, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, all right, cool. I even apologized, cause I was, even though I shouldn't have, because I, I really didn't do anything wrong. But just to make things on an even playing field, I was like, you know what? I'm sorry if I made you feel some type of way, whatever, whatever. Just we're on an even playing field now. You know, I'm that type of person. I'll meet you in the middle. I ain't going to be like, hey, apologize to me, nigga. Like, no, nah, I'll meet you in the middle just so you know there was a misunderstanding whatever now that honestly i probably should have stepped away from there at that point should have stepped away but i didn't because I'm, I'm a person of giving giving at least a second chance you know what i'm saying i definitely got to work on that because sometimes people don't deserve second chances in certain situations like sometimes people are just who they are so i'm like all right cool so i want to say a week go by maybe like a week go by or whatever Everything good. Everything chill. Everything's fine. We pop out again or whatnot. Um, we was actually turning up with my homie, one of my good friends. Uh, he went, he, you know, he had been kind of dealing with some stuff. So he was able to pop out. So we only went to the same after hour spot just because of him. You know what I'm saying? He, he had been dealing with some stuff. So I was like, I bet we're gonna we're gonna turn up for you, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's good to get you out and about. So we chilling, having a great time. It was fun. Everything was cool. I'm not paying attention. At this point, I'm feeling good, dancing, not paying attention. And my friend was there for the first incident. He says something to her because apparently there was a guy that she was like slow dancing with. And I wasn't paying attention. He was like right next to me. I wasn't looking. I just knew she was next to me, but I wasn't paying attention. And there was a guy that she, you know, had her arms wrapped around. She was, like, kind of slow dancing with him or whatever. And my friend was like, yo, chill out. What are you doing? Like, that's not cool. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I saw it. And I was like, oh, not, not again. So she get mad at him. Oh, we can fucking go. And mind you, she rolled with me. I'm like, oh, no, bro. I'm like, well. This night is shot. She did the same thing, just in a different way with a different individual. And I'm just like, ah, bro, there ain't, there ain't nothing I can do about this one. So once again, she turning up outside. And it seems like every time she's like in a stressful situation that she caused, she pulls out a cigarette. Any other time is smoking the blunts all day. But for whatever reason, she pulled out the cancer stick. And mind you, this is someone that's big on working out and healthy lifestyle. And you back though, pull out the cigs when you upset. That's crazy. That's wild. Anywho, she so pulled out the cig. I'm trying to talk to her. It's like three, four in the morning. I'm like, yo, can you calm down? We can fucking go, whatever. Or whatnot. Bro, tell me why. Tell me why. She going off on my friend. And I don't know how y'all operate with your friends, but I'm pretty loyal to them. At the end of the day, if my friend did something wrong and was out of line, I would address it. But this was one of those things where my friend was just legitimately looking out for me. He wasn't disrespectful. He was just like, yo, chill. Like, what are you doing? That's what friends are supposed to do. If they see some BS, they're supposed to call it out. And 
I'm not about to go at him for having my back because I wasn't even paying attention. So she being disrespectful, talking down to him. And I'm like, yo, you got to chill. That's my homie. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I, don't, I don't sell out my homies for any piece of ass. It's not that serious. So at that point, I'm getting irritated. The first time I was trying to be cool, calm, and collective. This time, the irritation is setting in. So we get in the car. She talking about this last time I'm going to come up here with you. I don't know if I want to continue to keep messing with you no more. This is just too much. This is your fault. You started. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? Like, bro, I couldn't believe I'm getting blamed for something that she did again. So at this point, I'm like, bro, all right, I'm going to take your ass home, bro. I, I, I ain't got time for this. Mind you, the drive from her crib was like a good 40 minutes. So I'm like, fudge, I am screwed. Now, for those who don't know, I love my car. I love my baby. If you see my car, you already know what it is. So... Anytime she was with me, anytime I would speed, you know what I'm saying? I let the, the horsepowers rip or whatnot. She would love it. She'd be vroom, vroom. Like she loved when I was pushing it in my car. But this time it was different because I'm pushing it now to get her home, to get her out my shit. So I'm getting slowly but surely getting upset. She talking to me crazy. And I'm talking to you like I'm talking to you. Like I'm talking to y'all right now. That's how I was talking to her. I was like, yo. You ain't got to yell. You ain't got to curse at me. Calm down. And she was like, nah, I got to because you clearly don't, you clearly don't understand. You clearly don't fucking get it. I'm like, whoa. Like, I'm, I'm like, what is we, you, what is this energy? Mind you, it's zero to a hundred for no reason other than you just don't like someone telling you about yourself. So at this point, it's like five in the morning. There's no traffic or whatever. I'm getting heated. Imagine someone yelling at you and raising their voice while you're trying to get them to calm down while you're driving and at this point i stop in the middle of the highway there's no cars and i'm like yo i'm gonna need you to calm the f down we ain't doing this right now you got me messed up and she's like you could drop me off right here i'm like no i'm not about to drop you off in the middle of the highway even though i probably should have but i'm not about to drop you off here no 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 no, no. i'm gonna take your ass home but you gotta calm that down you doing the most and at this point, she yelling and I start raising my voice. Now, mind you, I'm not calling out her name or anything like that, but I'm raising my voice now because now it's only so much you can take. And this is one of those things where I start, you know, I, I want to take a, a lesson out of this and I'm going to give you all the lesson afterwards. So I'm raising my voice like, yo, you ain't going to talk to me like that. Like my mama don't even talk to me like that. I've been nice to you. I'm taking you out on dates. I showed you, you know what I'm saying? My affection, my, you know, I, I showed you I ain't like everybody else. And you come in at me very disrespectfully over some motherfucking shit you did. So at this point, I'm pushing it. You know, I'm, I'm gone because I'm like, you got to get out my car. So I got to make sure I get you home as quick as possible. She was like, nah. Drop me off at the next exit. I was like, okay. Look, I ain't about to argue with you. If you want to get out my vehicle, I'm going to get you out my vehicle. So we get to the next exit. It's like this random gas station. It's, mind you, it's like 5, almost 6 in the morning. Now, here's where I made my mistake, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not proud of this. Some of you guys may not may think it's justified. Me being who I am, I know I'm better than this. But shit happens. So as I park, like I, I stopped the car, she getting her stuff. I'm not looking at her because I'm so angry. I'm just looking straight. I'm not paying attention to if she got everything. I honestly don't care. I just want her out my damn vehicle. So before she can even close the door, I sped off and I heard something fall. I think she ended up falling. I think she dropped some of her stuff out of her purse. But she ended up falling before she could fully get out the car. So she ended up falling. I circled back around and I can see her like on the ground or whatnot. And I just sped off and I went home. I ain't, I ain't checked or nothing like that. Now, apparently from what uh, my homie had uh, let me know, because my homie was trying to talk. Well, 
my homie was trying to, you know, talk to a friend that was with us that same night. Everything went down or whatever. Her friend had to come pick her up. Apparently, she broke her phone. She had two phones. They kind of cracked because she fell out the car or whatever. She was a little scraped up. And, you know what I'm saying, she was very, very upset. And I get it. I get it. I, that wasn't my best of moments. She ain't deserved to, you know what I'm saying, fall out the car. But at the same time, it was one of those things where it's like, I ain't deserve someone talking to me crazy, being disrespectful to me in my own shit while I'm driving, trying to get you home. So I'm not saying two wrongs make a right, but that definitely, you know, wasn't the best moment, but it happened. You know what I'm saying? She fell out the car while I was trying to, you know, drive off. My bad. You know, I'm not proud of that. I felt bad about that once I found out what happened. But at that point, she had blocked me on everything. So it's not like I could apologize. The only thing I was going to apologize for is her falling out the car. But outside of that, leaving her at that gas station, that was the play. So at that point, we done talking. We don't talk no more. So I hit up, if you guys remember, at the beginning of the story, my homie that said, watch out for her. I hit up the homie. I'm like, yo, what did you mean by watch out for her? And he told me pretty much before I was, me and her was a thing. She used to mess with his homie. And apparently that's just what she does. Like she'll be out with people or whatever that she cool with or mess with. And she'll just, she'll get lit and then start section hopping and dancing on other guys. So that was just what she does. That was in her nature to be like that. I was, oh shit, damn. Well, I probably should have listened. I would have avoided all of this, but that's neither here nor there. So this done, right? You think the saga is over. There's nothing to be said. There's nothing to worry about. We have not talked in a few months. Everything cool, right? No. So this literally happened last night. <laughs> as of me filming this has happened or early this morning technically so i'm out with my homie we chilling i hadn't been to this particular after hour spot in since the last incident so i finally we go out we go to it and out of all the times i go out she happens to pull up right as me and my homie is parking she pulls up i see her and her friend she saw me so I'm laughing because I'm like, yo, this is hilarious. So I'm chilling, chilling in the section with my homies. We're just having a good time or whatever. No, no issue. She walk in or whatever. She hugging everybody or whatever. She see me in there. She know I'm in there, but nothing happens. She dancing, having a good time or whatever. She ends up rolling up one of my homies that I personally know on the stage, grinding, showing out. And then she ends up you know, grinding on another homie that I know, you know what I'm saying? They don't know our relationship, so it's whatever. It's free game at that point. But she's showing out. She was just section hopping, just showing out. And I'm like, nah, oh, that's crazy. Now, I don't know if she was trying to get a reaction out of me, but I wasn't because at the end of the day, what's done is done. Shit happens. Life, you know, you know, life, life is what it is. So you just move on. I'm not about to be pressed like, okay, we, we dated for a little bit. It didn't even go far. All right, cool. So, at this point, she leaves, right? I'm like, okay. And something said, check my car. Now, she knows what my car looks like. She knows where I parked at because she saw me. So, I'm like, all right, let me check my car. So, as I step outside and I see her drive off, I'm checking to make sure there's no scratches or anything. I'm just, just something told me to do that. And then I see something on my door. And I'm going to play the clip for you. That's crazy. That's crazy. When people you used to fuck with put bloody tampons on your door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She left a bloody tampon on the door handle on the driver's side. She took time to get a bloody tampon. Don't know if it was hers or friends or wherever she got it from. Taped it up and put it on the door handle, bro. Now, mind you, 
at first I wasn't sure what it was because I don't know if you guys know there's been people that's be that they'll try to target women so they'll put stuff on their on their door seal on their car so when they touch it they get poisoned with something you know what I'm saying they have like a, a reaction to it so I'm thinking is somebody trying to sex traffic me like wait I'm looking for white bands and stuff but then I look and I was like that's a tampon bro that's a bloody tampon on the door handle and I know it had to be her because nobody else know that was my car. No other chick was in there that I messed with or no one at level. It made no sense for a random chick to put a damn tampon on my door seal. Hence, this is why she is forever will be known the tampon bandit. So at that point, I'm laughing as you can tell from the video. I'm laughing because I'm like, yo, you got to be kidding me. Like, what are we doing? We haven't talked in months, and this is the energy I get. You know what I'm saying? I get it. You fell out my car. My bad. But damn, like, let, let it go. So I guess that's her way of getting me. <laughs> the point I want to make out of this whole story is at the end of the day, you got to take time to get to know people. When things are good, great but you really get to find out someone's like personality and their intentions and how they feel when they're upset and when she was upset there's no reasoning there's no getting through it's just you got to deal with her talking to you any kind of way and coming at you crazy and me personally i can't deal with that that's not what i want in any type of relationship whether it's a friend or or more than a friend you know if you're upset and you can talk to me any kind of way then that lets me know how you feel you know and i'm not a big fan of that i've been pretty good on being upset and 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 dealing with that for the past uh, few years and i want to maintain that peace so anybody that's around me if you feel like that's how you feel when you up mad at me or whatever the case is even though i wasn't the one that did anything and you do that it's a no-go for me. So the lesson here is one, pay attention to them immediate red flags, them signs. They may be subtle. You got to pay attention. And two, got to make sure you, you give someone a, you know, that amount of time, that proper time to see them when they're not at their best, when they're, they're upset you know and also it's another lesson learned for me because i know i have a platform so putting people on my stories like that you know that can be dangerous because you know people see that and know everything's good and then you know they're not on my story no more and then you know it's like what happened you know so i gotta also be aware of letting people you know be on my social medias you know like that until i know for certain this is someone that's going to be there for the long haul but overall man i had to bring this story time to you guys i hope you guys enjoy it because once again this only this can happen to me man so I, I will say this to you guys man be careful of the the tampon bandits they are out there they are you know putting tampons on your car make sure you check your car seal all that stuff oh by the way i did have like uh you know i have some wipes in my car so i was able to wipe it down disinfect it but i'm actually gonna go get the car wash today get it thoroughly clean because we gotta get all that tampon juice off my door seal and i didn't touch it i had me uh, a rag with me always come prepared in case something wild like this happens man but hope you guys enjoyed that story time man more story times are on the way it's just you know i gotta find a way to formulate them or whatnot but uh i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'll see y'all in the next one <laughs> peace